Is it over? Shikamaru's voice carried over the silent battlefield. The bloody, broken and burned remains of every ninja who fought bravely in the Fourth Shinobi War lay in the massive area that extended as far as the eye could see and further. Shikamaru Nara, chief strategist for the Allied Shinobi forces, personal advisor to the Rokudame Hokage and commander of the ANBU were on his back staring up at the dark blood-red sky above. The clouds he had loved to look at had virtually disappeared from the world and darkness had taken hold. He was sporting a long gash starting at his right shoulder and making its way diagonally down to his left hip was staining his ripped and dirty green flak jacket and he could feel the last of his chirka trying to hold on. He was dying and he knew it. It's finally over. Naruto answered, he was the only person left to answer Shikamaru's question. The Rokudame Hokage, leader of the Allied Shinobi forces, seal master and toad sage and Jinchuriki of the nine-tailed fox was laying next to his best friend, his brother. His whole body was covered in blood and Naruto couldn't tell where the pain was coming from as all his nerves were being cut off. His chirka was just almost bad off as Shikamaru's was. He was dying and he knew it. It's been an honor, Shika. Naruto rasped out turning his head to the side with the last of his strength to look at the Nara. Likewise, Hokage-sama. No matter how troublesome it was, Shikamaru turned his head to face his Hokage with a small smile on his lips. N.A.R., I always knew you would be Hokage, even back in the academy. He admitted. Shikamaru. Thank you. Naruto whispered and tried not to tear up as he spotted a single tear make its way down the Nara's pale cheek cutting through the blood and grime. Like hell I'm going to let you die. This war wasn't meant to end like this. Kurama growled from inside his and Naruto's shared mind space. If you want to leave, I can use the last of my energy to break the seal. You will be free. Naruto said back. Even his mental voice sounded drained. There is nothing left out there, and I refuse to let you two die. As much as I loathe admitting it, you made life interesting. You and your friend may be ready to die, but I'm sure as hell not. Tell Shikamaru to hang on, we are going to stop all of this from ever happening. Kurama huffed, gathering his and his siblings' remaining chirka. Shika. The fur ball says he can stop this from happening. All of it. Naruto croaked. We have nothing else to lose. Kagaya and Zetsu took everything from us. I'll follow your lead like always, Hokage-sama. Shikamaru said with a hint of steel he used when ordering his ANBU around still heard in his hoarse voice. Do it. Naruto told Kurama. Rainbow Cherka borrowed from the tailed beasts leaked from Naruto's stomach, reaching out and wrapping itself around the Uzumaki Namakes and the last Nara. The Cherka flared up and a large crack echoed across the mass grave for the fallen as the two dying bodies of the leaf ninja faded out of this plane. Slowly the battlefield started to fade away, the jutsu working and the timeline was being destroyed hopefully to never return. Forward Slash Fluffy white clouds softly floated across the bright blue sky as a slight breeze carried them. Leaves rustled across the hill overlooking Kanoha in the land of fire, the wind gently caressing the two twelve-year-olds who lay on the grassy hill sleeping deeply. Out of nowhere rainbow chirka engulfed their bodies and slight changes were made to the genin. The first genin was one Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze and the second was Shikamaru Nara. Naruto's seal lit up in like a color spectrum as it changed to match the same seal he got from Rakuto from the future showing the Magatama beads instead of the seal his father had placed on him and some predominant scars appeared on his body, including the scar from taking Sasuke's Chidori in the chest. Shikamaru only gained some scars, including the one from his shoulder to his hip that had been killing him ever so slowly in the future. They both gained their red ANBU tattoos on their upper left arms. Naruto's cerulean eyes opened and his whole body tensed out of habit. His eyes darted around taking in every detail, but at the same time not really seeing anything at all. 
not until he landed on Shikamaru's twelve-year-old body lying unconscious next to him. Shika Naruto crawled over to his best friend and gently shook him. Wake up, you lazy Nara. It worked. Kurama's jutsu worked. Naruto exclaimed taking in his own twelve-year-old body and his kill-me orange jumpsuit. God in AR, you're too loud. Shikamaru groaned as he sat up, hand against his head. He blinked a few times and slowly took in his smaller body, Naruto's genin form, orange jumpsuit and Kanoha that the hill was overlooking. Oh hell. Shikamaru stated. I know, right? It's all still here. Everyone is still alive. Kurama did it. We can change everything. Naruto jumped up onto his feet and started to pace, hand going up to grip his spiky blonde hair. His words exhibited excitement, but his actions expressed his worry and uncertainty. Shikamaru could easily pick up on his hidden feelings behind his words and actions, the Nara picked himself up off the ground. He dusted off his brown pants and grabbed Naruto by his shoulders and locked eyes with him. Hokage-sama, you need to breathe. Shikamaru said a phrase he used a lot during strategy meetings for the war whenever it all overwhelmed the still too young Hokage. Naruto took a deep breath in and released it. He repeated this several times before he relaxed and flashed that bright smile of his at Shikamaru. Thank you, Shika. We need to think about this logically. He guessed at what the Nara was going to say next. Logically? Kurama sent us back to the past. There is nothing logical about that. Do you know how he did this? Shikamaru raised an eyebrow and the two lowered themselves back onto the hillside. The duo gazed at Kanoha silently, taking in every detail they could, from the slitted pupils Naruto was sporting Shikamaru knew the blonde was talking with the nine tails. A sudden release of air drew Shikamaru's attention back to his Hokage. I can't get to his area of our mindscape. I think whatever he did drained him of almost all his power and right now he is laying dormant. Naruto reported back as his pupils returned to normal. If we are truly back in the past, then we need to assess where our abilities are at if we traveled with our Cherka, skills, and whatnot. Tomorrow we can plan out what we need to do if we are to change the future. Shikamaru suggested. Got it. Training Area 11 is usually empty. Naruto stood up and Shikamaru followed closely. Kai. Naruto shouted after a few steps. This isn't Jinjutsu. So this is really happening. I guess it is. Shikamaru nodded after doing a Jinjutsu check of his own. Hold on. Naruto quickly drew out a seal on some spare paper and a brush he found in his pack. He placed one of the seals on his left thigh, the seal sinking under the fabric and did the same to Shikamaru. This will disguise our Cherka so they are back to the way they felt during our Jinning years. I knew I would wear off on you. Shikamaru smirked and the blonde slugged his brother's arm good naturally. The two headed towards said training ground. They could have run there, but they just opted to walk through Kanoha instead to take it all in. Shikamaru walked just slightly behind and to the right of Naruto, his usual position in the future. His eyes darted around the village, subconsciously taking in any and all threats and escape routes. By doing this, he saw the hate-filled glares that were sent Naruto's way, along with some parents pulling their kids away from the orange-clad genin. Leave it, Shika. It doesn't faze me anymore. Naruto's voice pierced Shikamaru's rather destructive train of thought as he knew exactly what the Kagi user was thinking. How you are still loyal to a village that hates you and beats you is beyond me. Shikamaru grunted, shoving his hands in his pockets to keep up his slacker image and to keep himself from pulling out a kunai and gutting everyone who glared at his brother, his Hokage like he was worse than dirt. It's in my blood, but my precious people are here and I could never leave them. Naruto answered smoothly and Shikamaru only grunted once more. 
Shikamaru personally thought that the Yellow Flash and the Red Hot Habanero wouldn't mind getting a few of these villagers for the way they treated their son, but he held his tongue. The duo arrived at the empty training ground 11 and with hardly a look exchanged between the two before the time travelers instantly pulled out Kunai and Shuriken. The Jinnin threw them towards nearby tree trunks to get an idea of where their accuracy lay. Surprising both of them, their weapons hit dead on with almost 10 10 accuracy, much like their aim in the future. If our accuracy with Kunai and Shurikens are this good, then our Kenjutsu must have come with us as well. Shikamaru surmised and glanced over to see Naruto had hinged the Kunai into a basic katana and was swinging it around in a graceful arch. That's an affirmative. Naruto nodded as he let the hinge disappear, and he dropped his kunai back in his leg holster. Let's give our ninjutsu a shot. Shikamaru stepped back as Naruto did his signature hand sign. Kage Bunshin no jutsu, shadow clone jutsu. Naruto intoned, and the training ground became filled with a hundred of orange-clad Narutos. How many did you aim to make? Shikamaru asked amused, as he was currently being held above the head of one of the clones. I was striving for ten. Naruto huffed and Shikamaru's eyes widened. You tried for ten and you got a hundred? Shikamaru felt the urge to slap his forehead. Yeah. Looks like our Churka control is shit, eh? The blonde laughed loudly. Cage main no jetsu, shadow possession jetsu. Shikamaru made his signature hand seal and watched as his shadow stretched out over the entire training ground, catching every single one of the clones plus some falling leaves. Huh. He managed to keep it for a full minute before he felt a strain on his churka and he released it. You two, Raisingan. You four, Rasen Shuriken and you try out the Hiration no Jetsu, Flying Thunder God Jetsu. Naruto ordered with ease as the unneeded clones disappeared. He stepped back to watch the clones try his signature jutsus. The two creating the Raisingan did it successfully after a few tries, the two dealing with the Rasen Shuriken, not so much. In fact, it pretty much exploded, but the four clones jumped in the way of the explosion protecting Naruto and Shikamaru. The final clone disappeared and Naruto frowned at all the intel that came back to him. It seems I can't do my two sans iration just yet. Rasen Shuriken was overloaded with raw churka and couldn't keep its form while the Raisin Gan managed to stay formed with a lot of focus. Naruto surmised. So using our elemental churka could be difficult. Dotan, Ringa no Jetsu, Earth Style, Barrier. Shikamaru slammed his palms onto the ground and saw that a ten-foot wall of solid earth rose up from inches in front of his palms. He covered his head as the wall shook before it exploded into millions of slivers of earth. Difficult, huh? Naruto quirks an eyebrow as he pulled himself out from behind a tree, dust and rock pieces covering his jumpsuit. More like troublesome. Shikamaru amended pinching the bridge of his nose. We lack Cherka control. He was cut off by a tree falling over to show Naruto standing there with Cherka swirling around his right foot, a confused look on his face. I was going to try tree walking, but it just broke. Naruto explained. As I was saying, we lack any and all decent Cherka control. Shikamaru dusted himself off and sunk into his taijutsu stance signaling Naruto to do the same. The Taijutsu was a mixture of the basic academy style, Guy and Lee's along with the Hyuga's Jukenpo, Gentle Fist. They breezed through their basic katas before they locked eyes and after a few long moments. Naruto gave a small shrug of his shoulders and they both faced a tree. They had no idea of their skills in Taijutsu at this time and didn't want to hurt the other just in case. Kanoha Senpu Kanoha Whirlwind Naruto did Lee's signature taijutsu move and stared in shock as the attack tipped down around seven trees. Shikamaru meanwhile did a few palm hits from Niji and Hinata's Jukenpo and watched in amazement as the tree trunk shattered. This could be an issue. Shikamaru stated unnecessarily. We are beyond screwed. Naruto threw his hands up in the air. 
We just to train. Intense training. Shikamaru rubbed his head as his mind worked out the problem that lay before them. We have time to work on it later. Right now I'm starving and I am in need of a solid night of sleep someplace safe. Naruto rubbed his stomach as he sat down. Shikamaru sat across from his Hokage while rubbing his eyes tiredly. There are some things we need to discuss first in AR. Shikamaru said stubbornly not letting Naruto's wide blue eyes prevented him from speaking like it did so many others. One of the other reasons why he was such a good advisor, he knew all of Naruto's tricks and could stay strong. Like what? He asked cautiously. The kill me orange jumpsuit you are now wearing. I know that we cannot change our clothes too soon, as it will raise more questions than we already will get once people see our different personalities, but maybe we can change our clothes sooner than last time? I refuse for my Hokage to be viewed in that any longer than needed. Shikamaru huffed, squinting his eyes at the neon orange jumpsuit. All fair points, Shikamaru, I think after the Chunin exams would be a good time for an upgrade. Naruto conceded the point as he plucked at the orange pant leg. You just have to promise me something, Shika. Anything, came Shikamaru's instant reply. He trusted Naruto with everything. Eat more. Naruto stated calmly. He gently grasped Shikamaru's pale wrist and let his index finger and thumb encircle it easily. I will if you do. Shikamaru jabbed Naruto in the ribs where the Nara knew he would be able to count the bones on the blonde's rib cage. While traveling with Jiraiya, the Sanin made sure Naruto was well fed and got enough sleep no matter the circumstances. I'll try, but at this point in time. The villagers still hate me. Naruto trailed off and Shikamaru growled lowly under his breath before he stood up, dragging the blonde ninja with him. You are coming home with me. Shikamaru said in his ANBU commander, no-nonsense tone of voice. What? Shika. I can't. Naruto trailed off. Shikamaru stood in front of the smaller blonde and pressed his lips together in a harsh line. You are my brother Naruto. Shikamaru stressed. My clan is made up of geniuses. If anyone can understand that you are not the QB, then it is them. They will know you are only the jailer, and I refuse to let you go back to that shithole you call an apartment. We both need food and good night's sleep someplace safe. If my family doesn't want you there, then we will go back to your apartment together. Shikamaru stressed his words again. Besides, once Ka-san sees you, she will smother you. Also, I don't know if I can face my Tusan and Ka-san without you. Shikamaru swallowed around the lump in his throat. Here I thought I had a way with words. Naruto joked weakly before he squeezed Shikamaru's shoulder. I'll be right beside you. Brother. Good. Shikamaru blushed and the two headed towards where the Nara clan home was located, all of them still alive and thriving. I'm right here, Shika. Naruto murmured to the Nara beside him. Thanks, N.A.R. Shikamaru steeled his nerves he could do this. He was the chief strategist, personal advisor to the Rokudame Hokage and ANBU commander. He could see his dead but now alive again clan. He could face his father and his mother without giving anything away. Hopefully. Maybe. Bringing up all his ANBU training, he put on his old everything is troublesome face and knocked on the front door to his home. Shikamaru tensed as he recognized the footsteps heading towards the door. The door slid open and there drying her hands on a deep forest green apron was Yoshino Nara, Shikamaru's mother. Shikamaru had to pull back his emotions, especially the ones that told him to go cling to his mother tightly and never let go. Shikachan, you're home just in time for dinner. Oh, who's your little friend? He's too cute. Yoshino gushed, keeping a warm smile on as she looked over to two boys, taking in their dirt-covered clothes, pale skin, and skinny forms. Ka-sen. Shikamaru breathed before coughing slightly, his cheeks pink from the nickname. 
This is my friend Naruto Uzumaki. I know it's late, but I was hoping he could stay over tonight. Of course. Please come in Naruto-kun, dinner is almost ready. Yoshino moved aside and watched as the two boys entered the house and took off their sandals. Arigatou. The boy said softly and a brief thoughtful frown marred her lips before she quickly replaced it with a smile as she led the boys towards the dining hall. Shikamaru was feeling at peace at once again being inside of his clan home while Naruto was feeling the same. He had spent many hours inside the compound. After Jiraiya died, the two had bonded over the large loss of a mentor and they spent even more time there planning and bonding before Pain destroyed Kanoha and the Fourth Ward destroyed everyone and everything that was rebuilding the village. The door slid to the side to show that Shikakunara was already seated at a table, his chin resting on his right open palm, eyes shut like he was sleeping and Shikamaru smiled fondly at the sight. His heart beating rapidly and eyes burning as Yoshino crept up behind her husband and whacked him over the head with a wooden spoon in a familiar routine. Ma, why did you do that Yoshino-chan? Shikaku whined rubbing his head and Naruto smothered a snort. We have a guest, dear. She said sweetly and Shikaku glanced over to where Shikamaru stood with Naruto beside him, his blue eyes wary. Tusan, this is a good friend of mine, Naruto Uzumaki. Shikamaru bowed his head a little, his heartbeat slowing back down to normal. He was slowly getting over the shock of seeing his family alive and well. Narasama. Naruto bowed his head in respect. None of that. Shikaku is fine. The Jounin commander waved his hand absently as he steadied the two genin in front of that. His son was standing at Naruto's right, only an inch or so behind him. That was how a solider stood when accompanying their superior. He took in how Shikamaru was slouched like he usually was, but now there was certain tenseness to it. Like he was consciously forcing himself to stay relaxed, the same could be said for Naruto. He picked up on the twitching of their dominant forearms, as if they were preparing to grab a weapon to defend themselves. His eyes narrowed when he took in the looks in their eyes. They were the same eyes that he saw when he looked at himself in the mirror. They both had eyes of war veterans. Naruto's had a look of fear in them, fear Shikaku realized was aimed at him. Fear of how he was going to be treated, if he was going to be hurt or rejected. Shikaku's heart clenched painfully at the sight of it. He watched mutely as Shikamaru shifted ever so slightly and the fear in Naruto's eyes faded. The way his son had shifted showed the trust the two had in each other. The shift signaled that if anything happened then Shikamaru would have Naruto's back and with that Naruto's fear was diminished. You two look exhausted. Why don't you boys go sit down in Shikamaru's room? I'll come get you when the food is ready. Shikaku smiled softly at the two. Arigatou to San. Shikamaru muttered, not making eye contact with his father, leading the blonde out of the dining hall. Did you see that too? Yoshino asked as she checked on the rice. I did. Something in Shikachan has changed. Shikaku slumped back in his seat. Naruto Kuen had fear in his eyes Yoshino. Minato's child was afraid of me. He ran a hand over his tired face. We all have heard about how the villagers and some shinobi treat Naruto Kuen. They hate him and for all we know they could have hurt him. We are unknowns and he is unsure of how we were going to react. All we can do for now is to show Naruto Kuen that we mean no harm. Besides he seems to bounce back quickly. Did you see what he did to the Hokage monument? That was pure Kushina. Yoshino reasoned, ending with a snicker at the memory, and Shikaku smiled tenderly at his wife. I knew there was a good reason why I married such a troublesome woman. Shikaku teased as he hugged his wife from behind planting a kiss on her head. Here I thought it was because I beat you at Shogi. Yoshino smirked and Shikaku made a noise in the back of his throat. I thought we agreed we would never talk about that again. He complained, and she just smirked as she turned back to the stove. Forward slash. Well, that went well. Naruto commented as Shikamaru shut the door to his room once the two were safely inside. 
I didn't pass out if that is what you mean. Shikamaru commented dryly, Naruto just snickered. Tusan and Ka-san are onto us. Already. They are your parents, Shikachan. Naruto teased and Shikamaru rolled his eyes. I would be worried if they didn't pick up on our changes. I suppose you're right, still troublesome. Shikamaru looked around his room with a small smile on his lips. Tomorrow we have meetings with our teams. That is going to be rough. Naruto commented as Shikamaru tossed the blonde a spare set of pajamas and the two quietly pulled them on. The two had grown used to getting changed in front of the other as they had shared a tent when on the front lines. I'm going to see Asuma, Choji, and Ino again. Shikamaru said, his voice tight. I'm going to see Kakashi again. I have to deal with the young Avenger Sasuke and fangirl Sakura. Naruto said with a heavy sigh. They aren't the same as we know them. Shikamaru muttered. If we do this right, then we can make them into the people we know. Some better than others. If we do this right, we can stop Sasuke from defecting. We can stop them all from dying in that war. Naruto slipped into his kage voice and Shikamaru unconsciously straightened up. Hi. Shikamaru nodded his head before he crawled onto his bed and sighed happily. However we can deal with all that tomorrow, right now we sleep. That has got to be one of your best ideas ever, Shika. Naruto agreed and Shikamaru quickly made room for Naruto and pinned him with his ANBU commander look. I think so too. Shikamaru replied drowsily as Naruto slid next to him, pulling up the blanket and the two passed out the moment they closed their eyes. Forward slash. Shikaku wandered down the hall towards Shikamaru's room and paused by the closed door. He frowned. He didn't hear any voices coming from inside. Even when Choji came by, there were noise coming from the room. He silently slid open the door a crack and was shocked to see both Shikamaru and Naruto on the bed. They were both fast asleep and looking peaceful. He padded into the room a bit further and took in how the two were positioned. They both were curled around each other. The black hair of Shikamaru and the blonde hair of Naruto clashed, but represented light and shadow, day and night, yin and yang. The way they were curled around the other was one that screamed protection. The way their arms and legs were positioned showed that they could jump into action if there was a threat nearby. Overall, it showed the utter trust the two genins seemed to share with each other. Another piece of the puzzle was added at this sight, and he heard a quiet squeal coming from Yoshino, who had come to see what was taking so long. She quickly rushed about the compound, gathering the woman of the clan, and brought them back to Shikamaru's room, and Shikaku heard them all give a collective awe at the sight before them. None of them seeing what Shikaku saw, they just saw two twelve-year-olds being adorable. Yoshino brought out a camera and clicked a photo of the two for her photo album. Shikaku got the feeling that Naruto would soon become a permanent fixture in the Nara household, and he didn't feel too worried about it. Your dad was staring us down for the whole meal. Naruto grumbled as the two entered training ground 11 at 7 in the morning. He's in the process of creating a theory. We can worry about Tusan later. Right now we need to make sure we don't kill any of our teammates. Shikamaru said as he dropped into his warm-up katas for taijutsu. I think it was just the fact that you were willingly out of bed at 6 in the morning. Naruto snorted as he fell into sync with Shikamaru. If we had told them we were going to train instead of meeting our teams, then I'm pretty sure they would have taken me to the psych ward of the hospital. Shikamaru gave a most likely scenario. Naruto agreed and the two fell into their usual sparring forms and working together they managed to reign in their strength. I think that's enough for today, as long as we don't use any ninjutsu we should, in theory, be fine. Naruto stated as the two cooled down. You mean besides the fact that we are going to be seeing our now alive friends and senseis? Shikamaru raised an eyebrow. Yeah, other than that. Naruto smirked and the two brushed off their clothes. Good luck. You too, Hokage-sama. Shikamaru inclined his head. None of that. 
The blonde waved his hand. Like it or not, you have always been my Hokage-sama. Shikamaru pointed out. You're making me blush. Naruto ducked his head. There was in fact pink dusting his cheeks. I'll find you after training is done. With that being said, the blonde Jin and Sheshin and away leaves falling to the ground. Shikamaru shook his head and started to walk towards where Team Ten met, hands in his pockets and consciously slouching. Forward slash. Something on your mind, Shikaku? Choza asked concerned at the lack of attention the Nara was giving himself and Inoichi. Nothing. Just Shikachan brought home a friend last night. His friend was Naruto Uzumaki. Shikaku revealed to the group. I did not know that your son was friends with him. Inoichi commented. I wasn't aware of this either. Shikaku admitted and this gained him raised eyebrows from both his friends. I know from Choji that back in the academy, Shikamaru, Naruto, Kiba and him were always together because they were dead lasts. Choza said thinking back. I had no idea that Shikamaru was still friends with Naruto. What happened? Inoichi could tell from all his years of being the head of TNI that something else had happened that made Shikaku puzzled. When Naruto Kuen looked at me, he had fear in his eyes, but then my son shifted ever so slightly. Like he was signaling to Naruto Kuen that he was there to protect him and the fear disappeared. Shikaku explained, seeing his teammates' expressions he went on. The way they stood. Shikamaru was always an inch behind Naruto and to his right. When they fell asleep, their body language showed that they were protecting each other and were ready to jump into action at a moment's notice. The part that got me was... Their eyes. Their eyes? Enoichi questioned, his mind processing what his teammate was telling them. They looked. Old. Battle scarred. The eyes of a war veteran. Those eyes were in the faces of Minato's twelve-year-old son and mine. Shikaku finished as he finished his cup of sake. Yes, it was early, but he needed it. Should we tell the Hokage? Chose a wonder of aloud after minutes of silence passed. Not yet. I have nothing solid to go on. Shikaku decided after a moment of thought. It would be best to keep this between the three of us. Agreed. Inoichi nodded his head in agreement as he pushed his cup of sake towards his scarred friend, knowing this man needed it more than him. Forward slash. Naruto strolled towards the bridge where he usually met up with Team 7 and wasn't surprised to see both Sakura and Sasuke there. He actually froze in his spot at the sight of his former teammates. They were so young, so innocent, so unscarred from the war. He took a steadying breath and took another step when a familiar feeling chirka caught his attention and he couldn't help but smile. It belonged to Kakashi Sensei and it was coming from underneath the bridge, so that was what he does when he was busy being late. Sneaky Kapinin Naruto tensed and leapt up into the air and came down heavily on the bridge, making a grand entrance. Good morning. He bellowed and grinned widely as he heard a muttered curse from under his feet. Naruto Yubaka. Sakura shouted and Naruto let himself be whacked over the head just for old time's sake. He forgot that before her training her hits were soft. Dope. Sasuke hissed, rubbing his ear. Don't be like that Sasuke team. Naruto teased, pushing back all feelings of betrayal when he saw the Uchiha. Just wanted to wake you two up a bit. Well, we're awake now, aren't we? Sakura huffed, crossing her arms annoyed, and Naruto smiled softly at her. Sorry, Sakura, Chan. He tacked on the Chan as he had stopped using it when they grew close. What's wrong with you, Dobe? Sasuke questioned, crossing his arms. I forgot that he was a genius. Naruto thought annoyed. What are you even talking about, team? Hey, since Kakashi-sensei is always so late, we should try to find out what he does that makes him so late. 
Of course, Naruto knew that Kakashi's mornings generally consisted of sleeping, eating, reading, and long visits at the memorial stone, but they didn't need to know this. As much as I hate to say it, Naruto makes a good point. Sakura said grudgingly, If you want to find out where Kakashi Sensei is Sasuke Kuen, then I'll follow you. She turned to the raven haired Avenger with hearts in her eyes. Naruto sighed internally, he forgot the pains of having a fangirl on his team. Morning, my kawaii Jennings. Kakashi called out as he approached, his usual book in his hand. You're late. Sakura shouted and Sasuke just rolled his eyes at his sensei. A wistful expression crossed Naruto's face briefly before he waved at his silver-haired sensei. It was good to see him alive and in one piece. I think it's an improvement. He was only an hour late this time. Sensei, why is your hair wet? Naruto tilted his head to the side innocently. It would have worked if Kakashi didn't know his mother and knew that smile on his lips was the exact same one that Kushina had when she pranked someone. Ma, time to train. Kakashi's visible eye turned up in AU to show he was smiling. Hi. Naruto snapped off an ANBU salute out of reflex and quickly took off towards training ground 7, not waiting to see the confused looks he got from Sakura and Sasuke and the shocked look on the visible part of Kakashi's face. Naruto couldn't help himself but sigh repeatedly as the training went on. He forgot how weak the other two were and since his chirka control was utter crap at the moment the blonde had taken to practicing his aim after making sure he slipped up every so often. He watched Sasuke and Kakashi spar, and he didn't feel any of the favoritism that he felt the first time around. He knew that Kakashi was given this team so he could watch out for Sasuke to make sure he didn't defect. That had worked out well. Kakashi in the future had told Naruto that he had mostly agreed so he could stay near him to make sure he was protected and could learn to protect himself. Naruto smiled softly at the memory as he flung more kunai at the targets and watched as Sakura slowly did some taijutsu katas, her eyes trained on Sasuke. He sighed again, knowing he should help her with her taijutsu, but at this point in time she would just shout at him. This Sakura wasn't the same one he fought side by side with in the war. Naruto quickly forced himself off that train of thought before he could remember the images of what she looked like when he found her body. Your aim is improving, Naruto. Kakashi spoke up, the blonde nearly face planted. He had been lost in thought and had missed the Kapinin approaching. Ah, thanks, Sensei. Naruto beamed at the praise before throwing his final kunai with deadly accuracy. Sensei, I was wondering about something. If I can make Kagebunshin, Shadow Clones, can I make Shuriken Kagebunshin, Shuriken Shadow Clones? Naruto tilted his head to the side as he pulled out a few shurikens. Hi, I believe you will be able to do this technique, Naruto. Kakashi looked down at the blonde startled before he recovered and encouraged the smaller version of his old sensei and the down and explained the theory behind it. I'll nail it by training tomorrow, sensei, Databeo. Naruto stated firmly before throwing on his old saying with a huge, if albeit forced grin. I'll be looking forward to it. Kakashi patted Naruto's blonde hair and the genin blinked shocked at the gesture, but took it in stride and beamed up at the silver-haired Jounin before the Kapinin moved over to help Sakura. Now I have to nail it by tomorrow, a man. Naruto muttered to himself. I should be able to make a solid dozen or so with my crap control. What are you muttering about, Dobe? Sasuke came over, wiping his face down on a towel. Nothing that you need to worry about, team. Naruto shot back, his eye twitching at the sight of the raven-haired Avenger, who just hn ed and walked away. Forward slash. Asuma let out a puff of smoke as he took in his genin team. Choji was running laps to try to improve his stamina. Ino was currently leaping tree to tree, only using the Cherka stored in her feet. The one who was really catching his interest was Shikamaru. The Nara who usually favored sleeping and non-strenuous activities during training wasn't slacking off. Something had been different about Shikamaru from the moment he joined them for training. 
the way his face lit up when he talked to them and how his eyes lingered on each of them longer than usual. His eyes were different. They were different in a way that Asuma had seen on veterans from the Third Shinobi War. He had no idea why it was on his twelve-year-old Jinin. He inhaled as he watched out of the corner of his eye as Shikamaru slashed away at dummies with a kunai, the movements very similar to Kenjutsu, but he knew that Shikamaru had never used a sword before. He would do well with a sword or maybe even trench knives. Asuma mused as he put his cigarette out and made his way to the Nara who just finished slashing apart a dummy with perfect accuracy. You're doing well with handling your kunai like that, Shikamaru. Asuma spoke and he frowned briefly as Shikamaru startled visibly and he spun around, the kunai held up ready for attack or defense. Seeing who it was, Shikamaru relaxed and lowered the kunai. This caused Asuma to frown and scan Shikamaru's face once more, but found it void of emotion. Yeah. Shikamaru put away the kunai and put his hands in his pocket, shoulders slouching. Thanks. Maybe I'll train you to use my trench knives. Asuma smiled and Shikamaru again startled before he smiled easily at his sensei. That would be great, thanks sensei. Shikamaru said honestly. Here, try them out. Asuma said after a moment of thought. He pulled out the knives and carefully handed them over to the genin who stared at them in shock. Are you sure Asuma sensei? Shikamaru asked softly. I know you will be great with them, Shikamaru. Hell, you might even be able to integrate them with your clan's jetsus. Asuma stroked his bread in thought and almost missed the look of shock that crossed Shikamaru's features before it was gone and Shikamaru slid his fingers into the holes and gave them a few test swings. At Asuma's nod, the preteen faced the dummies and he was a blur of movement as he swung, punched, and slashed his way through the dummies. Asuma stared in amazement at how gracefully his student moved using taijutsu moves in time with the trench knives. Asuma swore he spotted some of Guy's taijutsu moves in it alongside some Hyuga stances, but that wasn't possible so the bearded jounin passed it off as the trick of the light. How was that? Shikamaru asked, panting slightly. You looked like you were using those for years. Asuma said truthfully. I've just seen you using them and figured that using taijutsu with them would be easier than using any other kind of jutsu with them. Shikamaru said shrugged his shoulders. He gently removed the trench knives with reverence and handed them back to his sensei. We should play shogi when you have time. Asuma changed the topic sensing he wasn't going to get anything else from the Nara. I would like that Asuma sensei. Shikamaru smiled and Asuma spotted the same look enter his student's eyes from before. Are you okay, kid? Asuma placed his hand on Shikamaru's shoulder in concern. I'm great actually, sensei. Shikamaru gave his sensei a true smile. I'm glad. Come on, let's go save Choji before he collapses. I don't think he's supposed to turn that shade of red. Asuma chuckled. Right behind you, Sensei. Shikamaru nodded, agreeing. Forward slash. Follow me, my kawaii jennings. Kakashi called out half an hour later, orange book back in his hand. What are we doing, Kakashi Sensei? Sakura quickly walked beside Sasuke, who just ignored her. The Hokage wants to see us. Kakashi stated as the group made their way through the village. Another mission? Naruto forced himself to almost shout in excitement. I don't think so, Naruto. Kakashi shook his head fondly at the loud blonde. Ah. Oh. Naruto pouted and quickly stiffened, masking his face to become one of indifference as harsh whispers and hurtful words started up around him. Demons shouldn't be so loud, they shouldn't be seen or heard. One man growled at the passing Jinin. Too bad he didn't die out on that last mission of his. Another one agreed. Naruto just looked down at his feet, hands clenching as he pulled in his anger. His seal was heating up. Kurama could still pick up on his host's anger even if he was sleeping. It's fine, Kurama. I can deal with it. Just keep sleeping. 
Naruto begged internally, and he felt the seal cool back down, and he sighed relieved. While he was forcing on Kurama, he didn't notice the confused looks Sakura and Sasuke were giving him in response to the hate-filled words he was receiving. They had no idea what the villagers were talking about. Sure, Naruto was loud and annoying, but he didn't deserve to die. Kakashi, on the other hand, was fuming. He knew exactly what the villagers were talking about, and he had to grit his teeth together to stop himself from doing something drastic, like for example slitting their throats and hiding the bodies. If he was still an ANBU, he may have done so, but he was a Jounin Sensei now, so he had to settle for sending out the glares he saved for only the deadliest of ninjas, and the words quieted when the speakers were subjected to Kakashi's glare. Oi! Naruto Kuen. A female voice called out and the blonde looked up in surprise as Yoshino Nara came bounding over, a few more women from the Nara clan following behind her. Yoshino-san Naruto blinked in surprise as Shikamaru's mother planted herself in front of him. I'm glad I ran into you here, naruto Kuen. I'm planning on making some ramen tonight, using a recipe from an old friend. I was going to get Shikamaru to find you to ask you, but since you are here, I'll do it now. My old friend would be heartbroken if you didn't get to try her ramen recipe, so you are coming over tonight. Yoshino beamed at the stunned blonde. She was talking about Kushina. The small blonde didn't know that, however. He's even adorable when he's awake. Do you see those blue eyes? So cute. Whispers from the other Nara woman started up and Naruto felt a blush rise to his cheeks. If I'm not intruding. Naruto said shyly. Not at all. I insist. I'll even teach you how to make it. Yoshino waved her hand dismissively. Then I would be honored Yoshino-san. Naruto beamed. I'll even make sure to bring Shika home right after we finished our training. I'll be waiting. Yoshino patted his head kindly before walking away. The other Nara woman waved at the blushing Jin and still giggling at how cute he was before following Yoshino. That was unexpected. Kakashi stated and Sasuke HN Ed. Was that Shikamaru's mother? Sakura questioned and Naruto nodded his head in slight shock. Come on guys, Gigi is waiting for us. Naruto snapped out of his stupor and rushed towards the Hokage Tower. The team entered the Hokage's office and Naruto felt like all the remaining breath he had was knocked out of him the moment he saw the Sandame sitting behind his desk and a mountain of paperwork, still alive and wrinkly as ever. I wonder if I should tell Gigi about using Kage Bunshin, Shadow Clones. Naruto thought absently as they bowed to the old man who nodded in response. I just wanted to make sure you three were doing all right after that C turned A rank mission. Sandame said kindly and Naruto had to swallow hard to stop a lump from forming in his throat. He forgot how much he missed the old man, but he still wanted Tsunade Bachan to become Hokage. However, there was a better way than having the Sandame die. I'm fine. Sasuke said simply, knowing better than to HN at the Hokage. I talked it out with my parents, so I am better now, Hokage-sama. Sakura bowed to the old man, and Naruto snapped himself out of his thoughts. I'm great, Gigi. Don't worry about me. Naruto beamed, raising his voice the right amount, and it was rewarded with a smile from the old man and a whack over the head from Sakura for calling the Hokage Gigi. Good, good. If you do feel stressed or worried about anything, there is help available. The Sandame explained and the trio nodded in understanding. Naruto idly wondered if said help could get Sakura out of her fangirl phase faster. Well, I'm sad to say I have no missions for your team right now. Please enjoy your day off. The Sandame smiled. This was a dismissal and Sasuke nodded before leaving the office. Sakura bowed before she hurried out after him. Naruto stayed behind as his eyes were locked on the portrait of his father. Is everything all right, Naruto? Kakashi asked, worry bubbling up in him as he spotted the blonde staring at the portrait of his father. Just. I look a lot like the Yandame, don't you think? 
Naruto asked innocently and took great pleasure in seeing Kakashi and the Sandame freeze up at his words. I mean give me some height, a deeper voice and jaw length bangs, and I'm like his twin. He trailed off and he inwardly snickered at the soft sputtering sounds he heard coming from behind Kakashi's mask. Weird huh? Well, see you later Kakashi Sensei, Gigi. He waved at them and started whistling a tune as he walked out of the office and down a small side corridor. He proceeded to giggle at their reactions as he reached out to find Shikamaru's Cherka. His sensory skills were still stable thank Kami. He closed his eyes and shushin it away. Forward slash. Found you Shika. Naruto sang as he appeared right next to the genin genius that was alone. I forgot how annoying you were when you mastered that. It was even worse when you mastered the oration. Shikamaru rubbed his forehead. How was your training today? Naruto asked as he fell into step with the other genin. I may have tipped Asuma off that I'm more than I let on. I decided to focus on my skill with a kunai and he gave me his trench knives to try out. Shikamaru explained. And you used them like you have been using them your whole life. Naruto finished the thought. Yeah, I gave him an excuse and he seemed to buy it. I just have to be more careful. Shikamaru sighed. It was hard seeing them alive and so carefree. It was great, but I couldn't help but stare at them sometimes while they were training. I know the feeling. I did manage to prank Kakashi and I also set myself up for when I used Shuriken Kage Bunshin. I forgot how much of a fangirl Sakura was and how weak she was in Taijutsu. Then on our way to talk to the Sandame, Yurika-san cornered me. She wants me to come over for dinner. She is making ramen and wants to teach us to make it. Naruto said as he adjusted their course towards the Nara compound. Sounds like Ka-san. Shikamaru smiled. How was seeing the Sandame? I felt like someone sucker punched me in the gut. Naruto did panned. He wanted to make sure we were dealing with what happened in the land of the waves. I also couldn't help but freak them out a bit. What did you do in AR? Shikamaru rolled his eyes fondly. I may have stated that the fourth and I looked a lot alike. Just give me some height, a deeper voice and jaw length bangs and bam we are the same. Oh man they looked shocked. But then I waved it off and left. Naruto retold what happened in the office and Shikamaru let out a true laugh at the story. I bet their faces were priceless. Shikamaru gasped for air and Naruto joined him in laughter as he imitated the faces of the two. Man, it felt good to laugh. Naruto wiped his eyes with the back of his hand. Yeah, it did. So are you ready to make some ramen? Shikamaru asked as he slid open the door to his clan's home. Bring it on. Naruto smirked and the two made their way to the dining hall where Yoshino was waiting for them. Okay, I need to get Shuriken Kage Bunshin, Shuriken Shadow Clones, down by the time we leave to meet our teams. Naruto stated as he and Shikamaru finished their warm-up the next morning. Let me get out of the way then, who knows how this is going to go. Shikamaru focused and slowly climbed up a tree for a better vantage point and to get out of the line of fire. Your chirka control is getting back to normal, lucky. Naruto pouted as Shikamaru settled on a tree branch. Not all of us have massive chirka pools. Shikamaru called down and Naruto just huffed as he made the correct hand seal. Shuriken Kage Bunshin. Naruto called out and around 100 shurikens appeared and struck around the training ground. The Kage Bunshins practicing Rasen Shuriken and Duration dodged out of the way before going back to work. Once more. Shuriken Kage Bunshin. Naruto tried once he let the others disappear. This time he narrowed it down to 50. He tried once more and got it to a solid 20. Your control is getting better but still needs work. Shikamaru commented as he dropped down from the tree. Hey, I can keep the Rasen Shuriken going now. Naruto commented as the four clones poofed away. How are your jutsus coming? Kaginui, shadow stitching. 
Shikamaru's shadow expanded and broke off from the ground and wrapped around a fallen tree's trunk and moved it around before Shikamaru let it drop. I'm still unsure about my elemental gestures. Shikamaru commented and Naruto nodded in agreement. Try a right turn, lightning, one. Naruto suggested and Shikamaru nodded. The Nara's main was Katan, fire, but he was good at Dotan, earth, and ration, lightning. His least usable elements were Futon, wind, and Swayton, water. Raitan, John, lightning style, false darkness. Shikamaru made the snake seal and the clouds above turned dark and lightning struck down into the ground like a spear. The ground around it became charred and scorches marks webbed outwards. Impressive. I think your Cherka control is almost back to normal. Naruto whistled and impressed as the sky returned to normal. It took a lot out of me to make sure it didn't go crazy. Shikamaru admitted, wiping his forehead as he fell back onto his but breathing heavily. Didn't Kakuzu use that? Naruto asked curiously. Yeah, I stole it from him. Shikamaru smirked and Naruto laughed loudly. I may not be a Kapinin, but it seemed like a good attack to have pointed the opposite way of me. I remember you using it on the front lines. It took out a whole row of reanimated sound ninja. Naruto said slowly sitting next to his best friend. Yeah, but it didn't save Shino. Shikamaru said bitterly as he drew his knees up to his chest. Hey, don't dwell on that. We can change it all, they are still here. Naruto said gently. I know. It's hard enough having to focus so hard to keep these elemental jutsus in check, but the memories of the last time I used each one keep coming back. Shikamaru shook his head. I know Shika, but we survived everything they threw at us and we came back to make sure everything will work out. Now give me some space, I want to try a futon jutsu. Shikamaru nodded and retreated to a safe distance, back up in his tree. Futon, Rapusho, wind style, gale palm. Naruto held his hands out and a small-scale gale wind was created between his outstretched palms, Naruto breathed out. He balanced it with one hand, his other hand drew out a kunai and then dropped it into the gale. He took the gale into both his hands again before he thrusted them towards a tree at the end of the clearing. He watched as the kunai became a blur of black as it sliced its way through the tree trunk. The gale force kunai severed the trunk in half before it embedded itself in the trunk of the tree behind it. You and your wind. Shikamaru shook his head fondly as the blonde grinned foxily up at him. Naruto then smirked and Shikamaru felt scared for his well-being. He was right to be worried as Naruto didn't even make a hand sign, but the Nara was lifted up off the tree branch and Naruto harnessing the wind flew the genin around the training area before setting him down on the ground. A little warning would be nice next time. Shikamaru huffed falling onto his but as Naruto grinned foxily once again. Sorry, I was just excited that I could still do a silent futon, furigurengu, wind style, free flying. Naruto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. I can see why. It is a very useful jutsu. Shikamaru said remembering back to the front lines where Naruto used that jutsu to pull up some enemy ninja and drop them right into the line of fire from the allied shinobi forces. If we keep practicing, at this rate we will be able to control our strength and chirk of better than before. Naruto rummaged around in the backpack he brought with him. Planning to work on some seals? Shikamaru asked seeing the blonde pull out a book, a brush, ink, and some paper. Can't let the top seal master get rusty, can I? Naruto asked, his voice flat as he opened the book. Have you tried using your chains yet? Shikamaru asked quietly. No, I know for a fact that without Karama's Cherka there is no way I can hold even half a chain stably outside of my body. Naruto sighed as he put the finishing stroke on a seal, setting aside to wait for the ink to dry. That and if you suddenly had QB red chains erupt from your body people will put the pieces together about your mother and we don't want that coming back to us. 
Shikamaru theorized as he practiced throwing his shadow around the clearing, catching leaves as they fell off of the remaining trees. That too. Naruto quirked a smile then he infused a stack of seals with his churka. The chunin exams are approaching. We have to make sure Orochimaru doesn't mark Sasuke, that guard doesn't release Shikaku, and that the invasion doesn't take us off guard like last time. Do we have any idea what is going to happen when you and Gar meet? Shikamaru asked quietly. Fuzzy is still fast asleep, so we can only guess what may happen. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. Best case scenario, he doesn't flip out during his fights. Worst case scenario, he tries to kill me the moment he meets me. Is that why you are making that barrier seal extra powerful by infusing it with your churka and blood? Shikamaru questioned. Nothing gets past you. Naruto said fondly. This seal will trap Shikaku in case he goes get free. It will paralyze anything inside of its area, excluding the creator. Then I can get in close and fix his horribly created seal. Can my Kaginui get in? Shikamaru asked seriously. Yes, I added that part. I knew you would want to be able to help. If you use one of your Kagejutsus, then the effects of the paralyzation will increase and make it easier for me to fix his seal. Naruto nodded. You know me so well. Shikamaru smiled. I should hope so, Shika. Naruto smiled back before he finished the barrier seal. Once this is dry, we should head out to meet our teams, and I need to make sure I only create 10 or 20 Shuriken Kage Bunshins. Naruto set the seal down to let it dry. I'm going to get Asuma to get us started on elemental jutsus. I think it would be best if my team learned some before the exam start. Shikamaru said after a moment's thought. I know that Ino is Dotan and Swaytun while Choji is Dotan and Ketan. If they can get even some low rank jutsus for each one under their belts before we enter the forest of death then I think our plan has a higher chance of success. Naruto and Shikamaru had spent the previous night up late behind a privacy seal Naruto whipped up planning out how they were going to change the exams and the invasion that started everything off. Do you think we should tell the Sandame where we come from beforehand? Naruto asked quietly. If it was the Godame then maybe, but not right now we can't. Not in these forms anyways, if we pull this off then the other forms can warn him of the coming troubles, going off the fact that we have seer blood in our veins. Shikamaru said after a moment of thought. True, alright the seal is dry. Time to head out. Naruto put his seals away and the two stood up, brushing themselves off before they shushing it away. Forward slash. Well, that was more of a disaster than I recalled. Naruto thought wearily as Team 7 returned to their training ground. They had spent the rest of the morning doing easy deering missions, like painting fences, weeding and mowing lawns. However, no matter the task, Sasuke brushed Naruto off, Sakura following suit after spewing insults at him and sometimes a hit over the head. Naruto sighed as he absentmindedly started to do his warm-up katas. Had he really been so horrible to work with? Was he really that much of a loudmouth idiot? He knew he toned it down and tried to get them to work together as team, but it did no good and his mood was a rather depressed one. All right, Naruto, let's see how far you far you are in learning that new jutsu. Kakashi approached the blonde after sending Sasuke off to practice his katan jutsus and Sakura on Cherka control. Hi, Kakashi-sensei. Here I go. Shuriken Kage Bunshins. Naruto did the jutsu and cheered mentally as only 20 clones of them appeared, flying across the training field. Good Naruto. Kakashi said after a moment of staring at the performed jutsu and the damage it caused. What do you want me to work on next, Sensei? Naruto bounced on his heels. Why don't we talk for a bit? Kakashi said slowly and Naruto tilted his head to the side confused. Talk? He asked and Kakashi nodded as he placed his hand on the Jinin's shoulder and shushing it away from the field. They ended up by the top of the Hokage Monument. 
What's wrong, Sensei? Naruto asked looking up at the copy name. Nothing is wrong with me, Naruto. I just want to know. Are you okay? After seeing everything in the land of the waves. Kakashi said gazing over Kanoha. Naruto did the same and frowned. Kakashi never did this when Naruto was still on his team. Naruto guessed saying he thought he looked like the Yandame shook the older man up. It just put some things in perspective for me I guess sensei. Life is cruel and unfair. It doesn't matter who you are. Naruto said seriously, noticing Kakashi had turned his full attention to him now. It also made me see that no matter what happens you have to keep fighting for the people that are precious to you. Like how Haku sacrificed himself to save Zabuza. It just made me determined to get stronger so I can protect the people I care about. Like you sensei, just watch me get strong enough to become Hokage so I can protect everyone, Databeo. Naruto turned his gaze to Kakashi and beamed up at him. He knew Kakashi well enough to detect surprise and shock in his one visible eye. I'm looking forward to be able to say I was the sensei of the Hokage Naruchan. Kakashi gave an eye smile, patting Naruto on the head. Naruto beamed at the words, if not a little confused about the nickname. Forward slash. You want me to test you guys to find out your elements? Asuma looked at the trio in front of him in surprise. I think we all have Cherka control and our Ino Shikacho formations down Pat Asuma Sensei. Ino pointed out and Choji munched on some chips agreeing. It would put us a step in front of the other Genin teams and if we can incorporate the elemental Jutsus in our Ino Shikacho formations then they will become more powerful and it will catch our enemies off guard. Shikamaru reasoned, shoulders slumped and hands in his pockets. Good reasoning. Asuma dropped his cigarette and crushed it with his heel. Give me a moment to grab what I need. With that he shushing it away and the trio sat together in silence. Ino was fixing her hair and Choji was finishing off his bag of chips. Shikamaru was on his back cloud watching as he enjoyed the silence, peace and feeling of safety he got when he was with his team. It had been a long while since he felt this at peace with the world, Ino was humming under her breath softly and Shikamaru felt a smile creep up on his lips. Ino, I bet if you ever tried singing you would have an amazing voice. Shikamaru commented, he didn't have to open his eyes to see the blush he knew was working its way across Ino's pale cheeks. You think so, Shikamaru? Ino asked quietly. Shikamaru hummed in response, and he knew that she was glowing and thinking the idea over. She truly did have a wonderful voice. He had heard her singing to calm down some crying kids during the war. All right, here I have some Cherka paper. Channel your Cherka into it, and the different reaction will show you your Cherka nature. Asuma handed each of them a piece of paper. For example... His paper cut in two before igniting my Cherka natures are Futon and Katan. Ino channeled her Cherka into her paper first and watched it become damp before it crumbled away. Ino, you have Swayton and Doton. Asuma said impressed before he handed her two scrolls. Inside each of these scrolls is some starting Jetsus for the elements you have. Choji went next and is ignited and crumbled away. Katan and Dotan, a good balance. Asuma handed Choji the needed scrolls. Shikamaru took a breath as he channeled his Cherka and watched as it wrinkled, ignited, and crumbled away. Raitan, Katan, and Dotan. Impressive Shikamaru. Asuma handed the preteen three scrolls, an impressed look on his face. Thanks. He took the scrolls and sat down with the other two and started to read over the scrolls. Shikamaru held in a sigh, this was going to be good for the long run, but he knew each of these jutsus already. Now Dotan is pretty easy to learn and control. I can help Shikamaru and Choji out with their katan, Shikamaru go to Kakashi for help with your raitan and Ino go to Kakashi as well for your swaitan jutsus. Asuma said, Hi. The trio nodded before they separated off to practice their new jetsus while Asuma oversaw them. 
Shikamaru had to pull back a lot of his churko when he did some doton and katan jutsus. He managed to get it to preform just above average the first time around. He saw the smile on Asuma's face as he watched over them. He spotted the grin Choji was sporting when he created a small wall of rock before he spluttered as Eno's Sweiton Jutsu exploded by him, soaking him to the bone. Shikamaru joined Eno and Asuma in laughing before Eno squealed when Choji took off after her for revenge. Are you up for a game of shogi after training Shikamaru? Asuma asked as he watched Ino using her chirka to jump from tree to tree to escape from Choji. Try not to lose in the first few turns, Sensei. Shikamaru smirked and chuckled when Asuma made an offended noise. First few turns, HMPF you're such a brat. Asuma lit up his cigarette and Shikamaru had to resist the strong urge to pluck it from his Sensei's fingers and take a long, much-needed drag himself. Yeah, but we're your brats. Shikamaru said cheekily as he pillowed his head on his hands and looked up at the cloudy sky. Asuma just hummed before lying next to his student to watch the clouds as well. Forward slash. How did your talk with Naruto go Kakashi? Sandame asked curiously, puffing on his pipe. He's changed Tokage-sama. Kakashi said after a moment of thought. He said his eyes were opened during the mission to the land of the waves. I think it might be something deeper than that. His eyes are different. They are eyes of someone who has seen too much. There isn't any way his eyes could look the way they do just from that one mission. Kakashi summarized. Hmm. When he spoke of his resemblance to the Yandame, it was with reverence. Do you think he knows the truth of who his parents are? The Hokage looked at Kakashi. He may have an idea. He's smarter than anyone realizes, and he has a mask firmly in place. Kakashi said, rubbing his head. How has the teamwork been building on the team? The Sandame took Kakashi's words in. Ma. Kakashi sighed. He saw everything that happened on the Deerang missions the team went on that morning, even if it looked like he was reading his book. I thought they had at least built a shaky foundation of teamwork and maybe friendship during the time in the land of the waves. I was wrong. If there is a way to do something alone, Sasuke will always make sure to do so. Naruto would try to offer advice or help, but the other two would shut him down swiftly, sometimes violently. I can see it is getting Naruto down and it is not his fault. Kakashi explained, his visible eye drooping. What can we do about this? The Sandame leaned forward. He truly cared for Naruto and believed that one day the blonde would surpass his father and became the best Hokage the village has ever seen. I can't interfere too much. It is something the three of them need to work out together. On their own, they are making progress. Naruto can make at least 20 Shuriken Kage Bunshins, Sasuke is training with his Sharingan and Katan Jetsus while Sakura has perfect Churka control. Kakashi reported, Are you going to nominate them for the Chunin exam? The Sandame asked curiously, I believe I will. Kakashi nodded, It is an environment where they are forced to work together. Hmm. First you pass a Jinin team and now you are nominating the same team. Having Naruto on your team is changing you Kakashi. The Hokage teased and Kakashi just glanced at the portrait of his sensei. I guess he is. Kakashi said softly and the Hokage just puffed knowingly on his pipe. Forward slash. How are you already beating me? It's only my fifth turn. Asuma asked Shikamaru, confused as the two sat inside the Nara compound by a shogi board. Pure talent Asuma-sensei. Shikamaru said dryly as he made his next move on the shogi board. He couldn't help but feel extremely happy. He was playing a game of shogi against his sensei once again. He never thought he would be able to do so again, but here they are. Shikaku had come by and watched the game for a few turns, sending a knowing smirk at Shikamaru before patting Asuma on the shoulder, wishing him luck. When Kurama woke up, Shikamaru really owed him one. Hey Shika, have you seen Chiyohime? 
Naruto walked out into the courtyard in a pair of black pants, sandals, and a t-shirt with the Nara clan symbol on the back. No, why are you looking for her? Shikamaru adjusted his ponytail as he took an Asuma's stunned expression at seeing Naruto in his home, wearing Shikamaru's clothes. I promised that after training I would play with her. Naruto waved at Asuma cheerfully. Nero and Aichan. I found you. A black-haired five-year-old girl flung herself out of the tree in the courtyard and into Naruto's awaiting arms. She giggled like mad as she hugged him before scurrying up onto Naruto's shoulders, little fingers clutching his blonde hair. There you are, Chiyoheim. Why were you in the tree? Naruto asked amused. I was watching Shikachan beat Asuma-sama in Shogi. He's going to lose in two more moves. Chiyo reported gravely. Asuma's eyes snapped back to the board. Ah man, she is right. She is a Nara. Shikamaru said his voice tinged with pride. Come on, Naranichan. Ka-san told me that we were going to help herd the deer today. Chio pulled at Naruto's hair to steer him towards the door that led down towards the forest. Right away, Chiyoheim. Naruto responded with a smile before he took off running, leaving high-pitched giggles in their wake. I didn't know you knew Naruto Kuen so well, Shikachan. Asuma commented teasingly as he and Shikamaru reset the board for a new game without even verbally confirming they were going to have another one. Yeah well. Once you get to know him, you don't really want to let him go. Shikamaru said now committedly, knowing that Asuma was fishing for information and he would play his game and win. He did however let his eyebrow twitched at the use of his family nickname and that earned a chuckle from his sensei. How long have you two known each other? A while. He seems to be integrated into your clan. He pretty much lives here now. Ka-san saw what his apartment looked like and literally packed his things up and moved him in. Huh. I win. Huh. Want to try again, Sensei? I'll beat you one of these days, Shikachan. A thin eyebrow twitched violently. What do you think Kakashi Sensei is going to have us do today, Sasuke Kuen? Sakura fawned over the Uchiha as per usual. Naruto was currently sitting on the railing of the bridge, letting his legs sway back and forth, and he had his eyes closed, meditating. He knew from training with Shikamaru that he could not reach sage mode, his twelve-year-old body couldn't hold it. So all he could do now was meditate and try to control his urge to kill his teammates. The blonde knew that today was the day that Kakashi-sensei would tell them he nominated them for the Chunin exams and they would get the rest of the day off. Naruto was counting on the same thing happening for Team 10 as he and Shikamaru had some things they needed to finalize before the Sand Sibs came to town. He's two hours late so far. Sakura commented annoyed. I'm sure he has a good reason. Naruto said breezily, not opening his eyes. He never has a good reason. Sakura scoffed annoyed. What are you even doing? You will fall in if you sit up there any longer. Is that a threat, Sakura-chan? Naruto asked flatly, not moving from his spot. A ninja must never let their guard down. Sasuke said smugly as he lashed out with the heel of his right hand. Naruto moved out of reflex. He bent backward so he was lying vertically. This allowed Sasuke's strike to hit nothing but air. Naruto snapped open his blue eyes and swung his legs up and doing a complex leg movement, trapped the Uchiha on the ground, immobile and defenseless. Naruto tuned out the shrieks coming from Sakura to let her Sasuke Kuen go. A ninja should also never attack their comrade, those who do so are worse than scum. Naruto stated impassively, tightening his grip on the genin with hard eyes. Do you understand me, Uchiha? Keep that in mind before you attack a comrade. Naruto released his hold on the Uchiha and stood up dusting his bright orange pants off. Naruchan is correct. I hope I haven't made a mistake by nominating you all for the Chunin exam. Kakashi's voice called out, 
Naruto simply turned slightly to either down and while Sakura startled and Sasuke picked himself off the ground with a look of fury aimed at Naruto. The Chunin exam? Sakura asked confused as Kakashi handed each of them a slip of paper. The exams are taking place in Kanoha this year. These exams are for all those who want to ascend from Jinin to Chunin. It is a showcase of your skills to the five nations. However, take this into consideration, these exams. People can die, and the second part rules do not apply. You need to work together to survive. It is starting in three days, so you have that long to decide it if you wish to join. Kakashi explained, and Naruto barely paid attention, as he knew all of this already. So this time around, they had three days to prepare before the exam started. That's all for today. Kakashi said before he disappeared in a swirl of leaves. I'm going to become a chunin. You better not back out, Dobe. Sasuke growled before he stalked off, Sakura following behind him. That would be the day. This time I'll become a chunin. I'm not going from Jinin to Hokage in a day. Naruto muttered to himself before he glanced around before he shushened to training ground 11 where he saw Shikamaru waiting for him with the same slip of paper in his hand. We have three days before everything gets set into motion. Shikamaru said as the two sat across from each other as Naruto pulled out a scroll and unsealed it, many seals appeared on the ground around the two. I finished the seals last night when you were cooking dinner with your mom. Naruto said and Shikamaru nodded. So shall we? Shikamaru stood up. Let me set up the privacy barrier first. Naruto pulled out a seal and slammed it on the ground. Activate. The seal glowed red and Shikamaru watched as the seal let out a pulse that surrounded the training ground and it raised a red barrier around them. Okay, that will hold until I take it down. Naruto said as he picked up a new seal. Ready? Let's do it. Shikamaru pulled off his gray jacket and mesh undershirt. He stood like a statue as Naruto applied seals to the Nara's back and in return the Nara applied the seals to Naruto's back. They stood still until Naruto nodded to signal that they were dried and were tattooed on their skin. Ready to give it a go? Shikamaru asked pulling his shirts back on. It'll work. Naruto said firmly and the two made hand seals and each of them created a single shadow clone. The two shadow clones looked at each other and started to spar. After five minutes of fighting and taking hard blows the two clones didn't disappear. Perfect, even with Kekiai Genkai's they won't be able to tell the difference. Naruto said exceedingly pleased with the success of the seals. Now let's see how well the second seal works. Naruto said excitedly and the two made another hand sign. A puff of smoke enveloped the two and with the seals on their back it made the hinges permanent looking so anyone with a Kekiai Genkai's will not be able to tell that it was a hinge. The two grew to six feet one inch, their facial features narrowed out and their cheekbones became more predominant. Their eyes were narrow and their irises were indigo while their pupils slitted like a fox or a cat. Their hair was now crimson with jaw-length bangs framing their faces, and it reached past their shoulders. One had his hair pulled up in a high ponytail, and the other one had his hair braided and resting over his right shoulder. The one with the ponytail wore black shinobi pants and matching sandals. He wore an armored mesh short-sleeved shirt. Over top of it was a long-sleeved hooded crimson red cloak, and a katana was slung across his back, and two trench knives were attached at his waist. The one with the braid also wore black shinobi pants and matching sandals. He had on a plain black long-sleeved shirt with a short-sleeved hooded crimson red cloak. His katana was attached to his waist. His hands were covered in black fingerless gloves with silver armor embedded over the knuckles. We look damn good, Shika. The one with the braid commented. Damn good in AR. Shikamaru smirked. Or should I say Akira? Right, you are Akito. These basic katanas will have to do until we have a chance to get back our real swords. Akira stated as he pulled his katana out as did Akito and the two started to practice their kenjutsu katas. 
The two spent the rest of the afternoon practicing their kenjutsu, ninjutsu, and taijutsu combinations. They worked in sync and just as well as they did during the war. They perfected their chirka control and their strength until they could do even their highest rank of jutsu are in total control. Meanwhile, the Jinin clones practiced as well, and by the time the sun started to set, the areas around them were destroyed, but the people within the barrier were extremely pleased. This could actually work. Akito said after as the two cooled down. Don't sound so surprised. Akira grumbled. You're still a knucklehead. Akito reminded his twin. And you're still a genius. Let's not dwell on things we both know already. Akira snorted. When we meet Gara and Orochimaru in the Forest of Death, should we be in these forms or in our normal forms? He flipped his braid back over his right shoulder. We can't show these forms too soon. They will know that we aren't Jinin, so we will have to risk showing some of our true skills. Akito reasoned and Akira nodded and snapped his fingers. The two became covered in smoke and the hinges dropped down and they became their normal selves again. They both snapped their fingers and their permanent clones disappeared in puffs of smoke. Ready to head home in AR? Shikamaru stretched his arms above his head. Yeah, I'm helping your mom cook this time. I think your dad is going to try to wrangle you into a game of shogi. Naruto commented as he dropped the barrier and stuck the seal back into the stack he had before he sealed them into his scroll once more. I know I can beat him, but if I don't give it my best, Tusan will know. I can't believe that my own father has become so troublesome. Shikamaru sighed as the two headed towards the Nara compound. You know they wouldn't mind if you called them Ka-san and Tusan. I've never really got to say those words to anyone before. I mean, I said it to the Chirka memory of my parents, but that was it. Naruto explained slowly. You would feel like you were betraying them if you called my parents Ka-san and Tusan. I don't think that the yellow flash and the red hot blood habanero would mind if you did. They would just want you to be happy. Shikamaru tilted his chin upwards and Naruto's gaze sat upon the head of the Yandame on the hill. You're right. He blew out a puff of air. Of course I am. Now come on. Shikamaru opened the front door and the two entered, towing off their sandals. Welcome home, Shikachan, Naruchan. Yoshino sang as the two entered the dining hall. Hi, Ka-san. The two said in sync and Yoshino beamed at how Naruto called her Ka-san. Are you ready to learn a new dish tonight, Naruchan? Yoshino asked and the blonde nodded looking excited. You got that nickname from Kakashi Sensei, didn't you? Naruto asked dismayed, planning to prank his sensei. A mother never reveals her sources. Yoshino placed her index finger on her lips, winking at him. Oh, Shikachan, your father is waiting for you to play shogi. Ma, troublesome. Shikamaru sighed and slouched out of the room to find his father. Good luck, Shika. Naruto called before giving Yoshino his full attention to learn a new dish. It was really nice spending time with her and being able to eat home cooked meals day after day was a bonus. On the front lines, you had to live off of instant meals and solider pills when there was a brief lull in the fighting. So this right now was heaven for his stomach. He was foregoing ramen until after the first round of the Chunin exams at least. Shikamaru padded into the same room that he and his father played shogi after Asuma's death. He took a deep breath to steal his emotions before he slid open the door to see his father already sitting by the set-up shogi board. You have been avoiding me. Shikaku stated as Shikamaru lowered himself across from his father. I've been busy too, San. My team has been learning elemental jutsus and we are entered in the Chunin exams. Shikamaru gave his father two new pieces of information. Oh, what are your elements? Shikaku asked curiously as he made his move. Raitan, Ketan, and Dotan. Shikamaru reported as he made his counter move. How are you coming along with those? Shikaku kept his surprise out of his voice, but Shikamaru caught it. 
Asuma Sensei says I'm ready to start practicing Birank soon. Shikamaru said it was true his sensei had given him a scroll full of Birank Jetsus after seeing that Shikamaru had mastered all the ones from the Sirank scrolls. Good for you, Shikamaru. Shikaku said, pride coloring his words. Thanks to San. Shikamaru ducked his heads, his cheeks pink as he made another move and scanned the board. If he kept playing the way he was then, he would beat his father in three moves. So Inochan hasn't been trying to get a later meeting time out of your sensei yet? Shikaku asked as he made another move. She's tried, but when Asuma sensei said he was thinking of nominating us for the Chunin exam, she stopped. Shikamaru thought fast. Hmm. Shikaku hummed and frowned as he took in the move his son just made. It was amateur at best, and he quickly made his move, beating his son. Good game to San. Shikamaru studied the board like he was trying to see how his father beat him. Is something troubling you, Shikachan? This wasn't up to your usual standards. Shikaku commented, leaning his elbows on the corners of the shogi board. The Chunin exams. Shikamaru said slowly, it wasn't a lie. He was worried about Orochimaru and the invasion. He was worried about meeting their Kazakage and seeing Tamari again. His feelings for her were still messed up even with going back to the past. Your team's teamwork is one of the best I've seen. That is what these exams are about. Just combine your skills and you will be fine. Shikaku said in his own encouraging way. Thanks for the advice, Tusan. We better go make sure Ka-san and N.A.R. haven't burned down the kitchen yet. Shikamaru stood up and brushed off his pants. You go ahead, I'll put the board away. Shikaku waved his hand and Shikamaru bowed his head before he walked out of the room. Shikaku turned back to the board and examined the game. His eyes narrowed and he clicked his tongue as he spotted the strategy his son had in place before he made that amateur move. If Shikamaru had kept going on his strategy then he would have won the game in three moves. He ran his conversation over in his head as he crossed his arms, hands in his large sleeves. He frowned. He didn't recall Inoichi saying anything about Ino complaining about getting up for training at 7 a.m. He also had seen Asuma in the village at 8 a.m. some mornings when Shikamaru and Naruto had left for training. Things were not adding up and it was only adding to the puzzle that had began forming the moment Shikamaru had brought home the Kyuubi's Jinchuriki. Shikaku balanced his chin on the front of his hand and stared thoughtfully at the board. Shikamaru's style had changed. It was more aggressive while defending almost perfectly mirroring a war plan. Maybe the Chunin exams will shed some light on it. Shikaku sighed as he started to clear the board. He stopped his movement when he noticed that the king was guarded to the maximum, like the whole strategy was based around protecting it. He shook his head and finished clearing the board and headed towards the dining hall to eat with his family. Naruto was included in his family now. He may not be a full-blooded Nara or even one by marriage, but he was Shikamaru's brother and therefore his son, so if anyone tried to harm either of his sons, the Jounin commander would not hesitate. He stepped into the kitchen to see Shikamaru's eye twitching as Naruto, Chio who was placed on the blonde's shoulders, and Yoshino laughing uproariously at the genin, and he smiled. Yes, he would do anything to protect his family. Are we done yet? Shikamaru asked the blonde, his arms loaded down with bags. Ka-san gave us a long list. We aren't even halfway through it. Naruto shook the piece of paper, the long piece of paper. Now that she has two students, she has been poring over all her cookbooks. Shikaku said amused at the sight of the two boys, both burdened with bags of food like he was. She's a slave driver too, San. I've burnt myself more cooking than I did when I was learning how to use explosive tags. Naruto grumbled as they walked down the street of the busy marketplace, face impassive at the harsh glares and words sent his way. However, they were considerably less because the head and the heir of the Nara clan were flanking him, Shikamaru automatically on Naruto's right. 
Shikaku had taken note of this and let his son stay where he seemed most comfortable, and if that was where a solitaire usually stood when walking with his superior, then so be it. The head of the Nara clan would find out the truth soon, he always did. Are you seeing this, Kakashi? Asuma blew out a stream of smoke. Usually seeing is believing, but even I'm having a hard time believing this. Kakashi leaned on the railing on the roof of one of the stores that overlooked the marketplace, his visible eye trained on his blonde student. Said student was currently food shopping with Shikaku and Shikamaru Nara. I knew that Naruto was integrated into Shikamaru's clan, but I didn't think he was this integrated. Asuma scratched his beard and told Kakashi of what he saw that day when he played shogi with Shikamaru. The two Jounin senseis watched as Naruto said something, Shikamaru laughed and elbowed the blonde while Shikaku shook his head fondly and ruffled both the boys' hair. We should invite our teams to dinner, to gauge their relationship. Kakashi said slowly a plan forming. That is a youthful idea of my eternal rival. I shall inform my team to meet your other youthful teams at seven tonight at the usual barbecue place. Guy shouted from behind the two, startling the bearded Jounin and the silver-haired Jounin sighed at the loud voice. Looks like it's happening then. I'll go inform my team and Karinais, you can tell Naruto and Shikamaru. Asuma held up a hand before he disappeared in a puff of smoke to find Choji, Ino, and his lover. Kakashi sighed before he dropped down into an alleyway and sauntered over to where the trio was standing. Kakashi Sensei Naruto waved both his arms at the silver-haired Jounin cheerfully. Narasama, Shikamaru Kuen, right? Kakashi raised a hand in greeting. Hi, Kakashi Sensei. Nice to meet you. Shikamaru inclined his head slightly to the older man. I came to tell you, too, that if you are free, the other teams are all meeting up tonight at Yakiniku Q around 7 for dinner. Kakashi invited the two Jinin. The preteens exchanged small glances before turning to Shikaku, who rubbed his neck. I can hold Yoshino-chan off for tonight. Shikaku said, his voice portraying his dread at the coming storm that was his wife. We'll be there, Kakashi-sensei. Naruto gave his sensei thumbs up and Shikamaru just yawned. That means he's in. I'm learning Nara speak. Kakashi gave an eye smile before he disappeared in a swirl of leaves as per usual. Shikamaru and Naruto exchanged knowing glances as Shikaku discreetly observed the two communicating silently and added it to the growing theory he was creating before the trio went on to try to finish the list Yoshino had assigned them. Forward slash. Seven o'clock found Shikamaru and Naruto standing outside of Yakiniku Q, looking at the restaurant with dread. Just act normal, let's see what they can infer from our behavior. Naruto suggested with a smirk. Should be fun. Shikamaru returned the smirk as the two entered the restaurant easily spotting Kakashi, Asuma, Kurinai, Gai, Sakura, Choji, Ino, Hinata, Kiba, Akamaru, Shino, Lee, and Tintin right away. Looks like Sasuke and Niji didn't even bother to show up. Well, that was fine with the two, as they hated their younger selves, so it was no big loss. Glad you could make it. Asuma gestured to the two remaining seats, right across from their senseis. Shikamaru raised a hand in greeting and Naruto beamed as the two slid into the seats and looked around the table. Asuma and Kakashi watched their genin's faces carefully as the two smiled at the people around them as introductions and greetings were exchanged. They saw many emotions flash in their eyes including fond recognition of Tintin Tin and Lee even though they had never met before this dinner. There was also an underlying sadness and darkness within their eyes. The two Jounins exchanged subtle glances and they both came to the silent agreement to keep a careful eye on the two Jinin. I'll take that. Shikamaru snagged a piece of food off of Naruto's plate and swallowed it with a smirk. That wasn't nice, Shikamaru. Ino narrowed her eyes at her teammate. He hated that anyways. What's the big deal? Shikamaru asked as he slowly chewed his food. He's right and I'll be taking this. Naruto snagged something from Shikamaru's plate. 
He's allergic to it. He cut off Eno before she could say anything. She sat back blinking in shock. Sakura-chan, why aren't you eating? Naruto glanced at his teammate's plate in concern. He had really hoped she was off of her stupid diet hell even Eno was eating normally. I'm not hungry, that's all. She defended and Eno picked up on what was going on and turned her intense blue gaze on the pink-haired girl. You're not still on that stupid diet, are you? Eno asked sharply and the girl sputtered. It's not healthy and if you are training then you are burning it off. If you want to have any chance of beating me in the Chunin exam's billboard brow then you have to eat. Eno used Sakura's old name to get her old friend angry and it worked if the tick on her forehead was anything to go by, but she started in on her plate with gusto. Kakashi and Naruto smiled at the blonde in thanks and she blushed slightly. Shikama returned to Shino with a faraway look in his eyes. Naruto stepped on the Nara's foot under the table. How are you Shino Kuen? Shikamaru asked softly and the Aburim looked up at the Nara in surprise. I am well and yourself? He asked from behind the white collar of his coat. I'm getting pretty good at my clan's jutsus. How are you and your kakechu developing? Shikamaru asked sincerely interested and the Aburim and Karina both looked at the Nara in shock. Naruto smiled slightly when he saw the upturn of Shino's lips just over the top of his collar before the blonde turned towards Tintin and Lee after pushing some beef onto Choji's plate seeing the Jinin had finished his and he got a bright smile in return. So Tintin-chan, I hear you are the weapons mistress of Kanoha. Naruto said, excitement lacing his voice. My father owns the best weapon shop in town and I love every sort of weapon. Tintin admitted, her eyes brightening at the talk of weapons. I've been wondering about katanas lately. Can you tell me a bit more about them? Naruto asked, curious as to what her father's shop has in stock not being able to go and visit it himself and not as Akira, not yet at least. Tintin beamed and she launched into the conversation with Naruto about the different types of katanas her father had and what each one was used for. Naruto was paying rapt attention and adding his two cents every so often as he was reminded of the conversations he and Shikamaru had with the future Tintin when they got there, not yet legendary, katanas causing his eyes to soften. Their conversation finished as she went to take a drink of water, her eyes still bright from talking about her passion. So Lee Kuen, you're the one who walks around Kanoha on his hands. That is really impressive. I don't think I could ever do that. Naruto laughed, being totally truthful as he and Lee had a contest in the future and Naruto ended up laying flat on his back and his arms like jello. The green-clad ninja had to carry him around on his back for the rest of the day. It was quite the sight to be seen, as he was Rokudame Hokage at the time. Thank you, Naruto Kuen. If you ever want to train with me, I will welcome a new sparing partner. Lee said in his youthful voice. Taijutsu, right? I'm looking forward to it, bushy brows. Naruto held his hand out and Lee beamed as he shook it. Y-O-S-H. I will await our sparring match, Naruto Kuen. Lee beamed and Guy rambled on in the background about the power of youth. You know Lee Kuen, Naruchan here took Sasuke Kuen down yesterday. Kakashi spoke up and the whole table froze to look at the blonde who laughed nervously. Shikamaru shook his head fondly if not a bit irritated at the fact the blonde showed some of his true skills and Sakura huffed. He attacked me from behind, I just reacted. Naruto admitted after all it was what happened. That is most youthful Naruto Kuen. I will train to surpass you. Lee clenched his fist and his eyes burst into youthful flames. Shikamaru smiled to himself, this might let Lee avoid fighting Sasuke and therefore Sasuke won't copy Lee's famous taijutsu move. Here you go Akamaru. Shikamaru lowered a piece of food to the Nikon. Akamaru yipped happily and chewed contently on the offered food. That's his favorite food. Kiba said slightly shocked as he ran his fingers through Akamaru's fur. How did you know? I just remembered it from our academy days. 
Shikamaru played it off as Akamaru licked Shikamaru's fingers fondly, whining lowly like he sensed all Shikamaru's emotions. He quickly scaled up onto the Nara's lap and then easily moved up onto the Jinnin's shoulders. Shikamaru being used to this from the future timeline, just sat still until Akamaru made himself comfortable before he went back to eating. What? Shikamaru asked, looking up at the shocked teammate. Nothing. Kiba said eyes locked on the Nara who just shrugged and went back to his meal. How are you doing Hinata-chan? Naruto asked softly and the Hyuga air squeaked slightly. I am G good in AR Naruto Kuen. H how A R Y Y U. She stammered out, fingers twiddling bashfully. I'm excited for the Chunin exams. Are you entering? He asked, smiling softly at her stammer. He now found it adorable. Why yes? I I know why you will be B G great. Hinata stuttered. I know you will give it your all Hinata-chan, and no matter what happens I'll be proud of you. Naruto beamed at her, referring to her future fight with Niji, but she didn't know that yet. T thank you in naruto Kuen. She squeaked as her cheeks heated up and she slumped back in her chair unconscious. She always does that. Is she sick or something? Naruto asked Kurinai worriedly. No, she'll be fine naruto Kuen. Kurina giggled and went to try to wake the Hyuga girl up. Good, that's a relief. Naruto sighed and Shikamaru sighed. No matter the time Naruto was still dense when it came to girls. The senseis watched the teams interact over the course of the dinner and was both pleased and confused at how Shikamaru and Naruto talked with the other genins. Forward slash. So. That was interesting. Asuma lit up a cigarette as he stood with the other Jounins outside after their students left. Naruto Kuen and Shikamaru Kuen eyes hold such hidden sorrow. Guy said in a rather somber tone. And they were directed at Arjenin. They were also talking with them like they had known the others all their lives. Kurina said, having been briefed by Asuma. You said that Narasama seems to know Naruto Kuen personally? She turned to Kakashi. From the sounds of it, he is a regular guest at their clan home. He and Shikamaru Kuen seem very close. Kakashi said, I saw Naruto Kuen at the Nara compound, going to help one of Shikamaru's cousins help her deer, and she seemed to know him quite well. Asuma let out a narrow stream of smoke from his lips. However, Shikamaru had never mentioned him before. There is something going on with those two. Kakashi said as he pulled out his Aika Aika make out paradise. Nothing we can do now until after the exams are over. My eternal rival is correct. Guy clenched his fists in his dramatic style. Did you say something? Kakashi didn't look up from his book. Asuma and Karinai rolled their eyes as Guy ranted about how hip and cool his rival was. Forward slash. So how did we do? Naruto asked as he and Shikamaru lay on Shikamaru's usual cloud-watching hill, this time watching the sun dye the horizon a beautiful mixture of colors. We spiked our sensei's interests, but I think we started the foundations for a strong friendship with the others. Shikamaru said after a moment of silence. I think so too. Tomorrow the San siblings come to town. Naruto said, pillowing his head on his hands. It's going to be weird seeing Gara all bloodthirsty again. Shikamaru closed his eyes briefly as Tamari's face flashed in his mind. Then the exams begin, all our plans start, and we can really make a difference. I wonder if seeing Shikaku will wake Kurama up. Naruto wondered aloud, poking at his seal. That would be useful, having more information on how we even got here would be an added bonus. Shikamaru agreed. Until tomorrow then, Naruto stated and the two fell into a comfortable silence. Wake up you lazy brat. I finally wake up from my nap and you aren't even awake. Kurama's voice echoed inside of Naruto's head and the blonde snapped his eyes open seeing he was in the shared mind space. Kurama? 
Are you finally awake after all this time? You sent us back to the past you fuzz ball and then you have the nerve to take a nap. Naruto ranted at the QB. You should be more grateful, Brett. Using that space-time jutsu could have killed me. I sent you two back to the past to make sure the war stops from happening and none of my siblings will be used to make that beast. Kurama flicked his tails annoyed while Naruto dodged them with ease, too used to this form of annoyance from the nine tails. So this is all real, everyone is still alive? Naruto asked as he managed to curl up next to the fox's furry face. It's all real, kid. You can stop it all from playing out the way it did in the future. Kurama assured the small blonde. Thank you, Kurama. You're the best. I don't care what anyone says. Naruto somehow wrapped his little 12-year-old arms around Kurama's large black nose. The QB huffed slightly, but allowed the Jinin to hug him. The Chunin exams are starting tomorrow. Today is the day I meet Gara for the first time. How do you think it will go with Shikaku sealed inside of him? Naruto asked concerned for the future Kazakage. I don't really want to fight him again right after I fight Niji, but I will if I have to. I have a theory, but until you see Gara, I won't know if it is plausible. Kurama said slowly. Fine, don't share with the rest of the class then you furball. Naruto huffed and Kurama batted him with one of his tails. I should go. If I'm going to save Kanoamaru from Kankuro, then I better be off. H.M. Kurama grunted as Naruto faded from the mind space. Naruto opened his eyes and looked around to see Shikamaru had already gotten up and was most likely out hurting the deer or helping Ka-san make breakfast. Naruto rolled off his bed and pulled on his orange jumpsuit and absently wondered what clothes he should get after the Chunin exams were done. He padded down the hallway and entered the dining hall to see Shikamaru, Yoshino, and Shikaku already there. Morning, Naruchan. You're just in time. Yoshino sang as the blonde slid into a chair as she and Shikamaru served up breakfast. This looks great, Shika, Ka-san. Naruto slapped his hands together in thanks before attacking his food with gusto. Yoshino smiled good-naturedly and Shikaku smirked a bit while Shikamaru rolled his eyes fondly before he too attacked his food. Yoshino and Shikaku exchanged pleased looks. Their boys were getting up to a healthy weight and their pale skin darkened a bit thanks to the time he spent out in the sun and they started to grow height-wise as puberty slowly started to descend upon them. So what do you two plan on doing today? Yoshino asked as she too started in on her food. I promised Kanoamaru we would play ninja today, so I'm going to find him. Naruto said, and Shikamaru gave a knowing nod. I'm going to go find Asuma-sensei and see if he wants to go cloud watching. I know Ino and Choji are busy today. Shikamaru shrugged his shoulders. Just be back in time to herd the deer. Shikaku reminded the two. Hi, Tu san they sang before stacking their empty plates in the sink, with waves at the two adults the two jinin left the Nara compound for the day. The fur ball finally woke up and told me he did a space-time jutsu and all this is real. Naruto reported to Shikamaru as they walked into the village. We'll talk more when we heard the deer tonight. We should have more to talk about after you encounter Gara. Shikamaru decided before the two nodded at each other and they parted ways. Let go of me, you big bully. Kanoamaru's voice caught Naruto's fox-enhanced ears. Looks like he needed to hurry if Kanoamaru already was encountering Kankuro. He focused and appeared next to Kanoamaru and placed his hand tightly on Kankuro's wrist before Sasuke could throw his pebble from his hiding place in the nearby tree. I would put him down if I were you. Hurting the Sandame's grandson will nothing for the alliance between our nations. Naruto spoke calmly to Kankuro, wincing as Kankuro's dead face overlapped with Kankuro's current one. The Sandame's grandson? This little brat? Kankuro huffed by released Kanoamaru, who scurried up Naruto's back, clinging to his shoulders trembling slightly. Naruto caught Sakura muttering the same thing from behind him. Yes, I take you are here for the Chunin exams? 
His gaze flitted between Kankaro and Timari, holding back a smile at his future friends. Yes, we are. We are from Suna. Timari responded haughtily. Welcome to Kanoha. Naruto bowed his head in respect to his future allies. Kankaro, Timari. A far too familiar voice called out as Gara joined their group. Naruto felt his lips twitch upwards at the little version of the Kazakage. Don't make a scene. Right away the two backed off, fear tinting their eyes and Naruto's gaze hardened. He would have to fix this and soon. What is your name? Gara stared the blonde down. Naruto Uzumaki and this is my teammate Sakura Haruno. Naruto bowed his head in respect for the future Kage. Sabaku no Gara. My siblings Kankuro and Timari. Mother is interested in you, but does not want me to kill you. We will meet again Naruto Uzumaki. Gara's teal eyes narrowed and something in them showed recognition at the blonde in front of him. Yes we shall Gara. I'm looking forward to it. Naruto said evenly and kept his gaze level as Gara's eyes looked back at him, surprised at the response. Kankuro and Timari shot Naruto a look that expressed their thoughts of the blonde. In other words, they thought Naruto was insane for looking forward to meeting Gara again. Are you okay, Kanoamaru? Naruto looked down at the child on his shoulders once the sand siblings were out of sight. Yeah. You were so cool, Naruto Nichan. Kanoamaru announced, eyes wide as he grinned up at his blonde hero. Heh, heh thanks. Naruto chuckled. He shot a glance up at the tree where he knew Sasuke was perched before he turned around and started to walk away, listening to Kanoamaru ramble on in childlike awe. So that went well. Naruto thought as he played ninja with Kanoamaru. Better than I thought, my theory is correct. When you go to her deer tonight, Enter our mind space and I'll know for sure. Kurama instructed the genin who gave a mental noise of agreement before turning all his attention to Kanoamaru for the rest of the day. After Naruto dropped Kanoamaru off at his home, Naruto decided to wander a bit to kill time until he had to meet Shikamaru to help her deer. Naruto A voice called out. Naruto let a huge smile cross his lips as he turned and spotted Arika Sensei hurrying over to where the blonde stood, waving one arm in greeting. Arika Sensei! Naruto shouted, waving both his arms wildly. He had really missed his big brother, and he hadn't seen the Chunin in such a long time. I haven't seen you around lately. How are you doing? Arika questioned as he fell into step beside the blonde who adjusted their course to head to the Chunin's apartment. My team has been entered for the Chunin exams, Arika Sensei. Can you believe it? Naruto bounced on his heels excitedly as the duo walked. He spotted Arika's face darken briefly at these words, but his features brightened before he smiled at the blonde Jinin. Naruto then remembered that Kakashi had told him in the future that he was terrified of Arika Sensei. The Chunin had been very vocal about Kakashi's decision to enter Team 7 in the exams. However, it led to a strong bond between the two and Naruto secretly agreed with Ino when she had said that the two were the perfect balance for each other and should just hook up. Perhaps it would happen this time around, then both his big brothers would be happy. I heard. Naruto, do you know what could happen in these exams? Arika asked seriously snapping the blonde out of his thoughts. Yeah. Kakashi Sensei told us about them. He was really serious about it actually and he seemed worried for our safety, but I have a good feeling about these exams Arika Sensei. Just you wait, I'm working my way up to Hokage. Naruto gave Arika a foxy grin and watched as the tension seemed to leave Arika's form as they arrived at Arika's apartment. That's good. Just be careful, Naruto. Arika said, heaving a resigned sigh. Naruto felt his willpower break and he flung his arms around Arika's waist and buried his face in the Chunin's flag jacket, inhaling the calming scent. He felt Arika startle before arms wrapped around his shoulders tightly in a hug. Thanks for worrying, Arika Sensei. Naruto muttered. I'll always worry about you, Naruto. 
Erica chatted gently. Just stays alive. Don't do anything stupid when I'm not around, like hunt down Kakashi Sensei and scold him. Naruto gave a cheeky smile as the two broke their brotherly embrace. There's an idea. Arika smirked. I think that he will be worrying just as much as you, so don't go too hard on him, Arika Sensei. Naruto shouted back over his shoulder as he jumped off the railing of the building and leapt across the rooftops. I should talk to him, I guess offering him ramen couldn't hurt. Arika muttered to himself as he opened his front door. Forward slash. Since the village didn't get destroyed by Shikaku, I'm going to assume the meeting with Gara went well. Shikamaru guessed as the two wandered the forest on the Nara's land later that night. He said mother was interested in me, but didn't want Agara to kill me. I think Shikaku has some issues, or the power of his actual mother is mixing with Shikaku's rage at being sealed. Naruto guessed as he spotted some deer grazing in the distance. So can Kurama shed any light on it? Shikamaru snorted at Naruto's words. He said I should go into our mind space tonight and he will know if his theory is correct. Naruto shook his shoulders. So in other words, you are leaving the deer herding to me? Shikamaru gave the blonde a disgruntled look. Naruto made a hand seal and a single Kage Bunshin appeared next to Shikamaru. Not completely, this will help ward off any questions as to where I went. You better tell me everything that happens. Shikamaru warned and Naruto snapped off an ANBU salute and Shikamaru just waved the blonde off before he and the Bunshin went off to herd the deer while the real Naruto leapt up into the trees and made himself comfortable on a wide tree branch. He closed his eyes and took a few soothing breaths before his pupils slitted and he entered his and Kurama's mind space. Forward slash. This isn't our usual mind space. Naruto looked around on guard as Kurama appeared next to him in a pure white space. No, this is the mind space that we the tailed beasts share. It isn't affected by time or space. Kurama explained and Naruto processed this. So you're saying that any of the other bijus could show up here? Naruto squeaked in alarm. Been a long time, you brat. A voice rumbled and Naruto spun around to see Shikaku appearing in the mind space and right away the blonde leapt up onto Kurama's head for safety. You're not going to try to kill me, are you? He asked, fingers clenching Kurama's red fur. Calm down, I remember everything from the future. Shikaku sat down, winding his large tail around his body. So you're not going to cause havoc this time around? Naruto asked hopefully. Too much hassle. Shikaku huffed. What about Gara? Are you going to keep tormenting him and make him call you mother? Naruto pressed, worried for the redhead. That wasn't completely me making him call me that. It was of the link to his mother's power in his sand. Shikaku protested annoyed. But even if I was willing to be friends with the little brat since he fought to save me from being sealed. I can't do much about it if his seal is still as flimsy as it is now. If he falls asleep or gets too angry then it will break and I will be released and it will do more harm than good to both him and the people around him at the time. Shikamaru and I have a plan to fix his seal during the Chunin exams. If you tell Gara not to freak out and kill us with his sand while we reseal him that would be great. Naruto said honestly. I'll pass on the message. Shikaku nodded his head and suddenly a new tailed beast appeared. Naruto. The beast in tone surprised. Gyuki. Naruto beamed at the eight-tailed octopus. You remember too. How's be doing? Still rapping, but completely alive thanks to you too I'm guessing. The Hachibi surmised. Kurama here did some space-time jutsu so we can stop everything that happened from well happening. Naruto explained and blinked as the rest of the tailed beasts appeared and he sat back on Kurama's head as the bijus reunited with each other and exchanged notes. Well, this could work well for us in the future. 
Naruto muttered to Kurama, who just grunted, still slightly annoyed that the blonde had the balls to sit on his head. He didn't know how the toad stood it. What is your plan, Naruto Kuen? I want to keep Fu safe this time around. Chomei turned to the blonde, and the other bijus made agreeing noises. The best thing you all can do right now is make sure you are on good terms with your Jinchuriki and warn them of the coming threat. For those who aren't integrated into their village, send them to Killer B. We are stronger when we are together, and since we know what is coming this time, we can be prepared and everyone can learn to work together and create their own Cherkas shrouds like Kurama and I did during the war. Naruto said unconsciously using his Hokage voice thus causing all the tailed beasts to pay attention to his words. Kurama felt a small amount of pride rush through his being at how all his siblings were listening the blonde's words. Once Shikamaru, Gara, and myself finish the Chunin exams we will arrange a meeting of all the Jinchuriki someplace safe and I will fix their seals if needed. Naruto finished outlining his plan and got nods from the bijus. Great, will you all talk amongst yourselves, I've got Deer to Herd and Shikaku you have a message to deliver. With that the blonde focused and he disappeared from the shared mind space. Your Jinchuriki is something else Kurama. Matatabi commented. He's a brat. Kurama huffed as he settled down on his front paws. At least he isn't a girl who is discovering the opposite sex. Matatabi licked her paw and rubbed it behind her ear like a true cat. He has. He's just too dense to notice. Kurama smirked. Fu just learned how to fly. She crashed through a lot of trees, but she did it. Chome commented smugly to Kokuo, who nodded politely as he tried to find something that Han did, but he didn't think killing some bandits counted as an achievement. What are you even talking about, Isabu? My Jinchuriki is clearly the best. He can control our sand without me even being sealed inside of him. Shikaku boasted to the three tail. Mine is the Mizukage. Isabu shot back. Mine will become the youngest ever Kazakage. Shikaku insisted. Goku shut his eyes to take a nap and Saiken followed suit. Kurama was just wondering why he thought bringing them all together was a good idea. Forward slash. Nice of you to join me. Shikamaru commented to Naruto as the blonde sat beside him in the middle of the herd of deer, letting his bunch in disappear, and he nuzzled by a fawn who was quite taken with the blonde. You didn't need me to help her after all. Naruto smirked as he petted the fawn softly. So it turns out the bijus have some sort of shared mind space that transcends time and space so they all showed up and remembered. So we made a plan to warn all the other hosts of the growing threat and the ones who live away from their village to meet up with Killer B. I talked Shikaku into being nicer to Gara, and when we approach him, to stay still and let us fix his seal. Then I said after we finish with the whole Chunin exam slash invasion scenario, we would make all the other hosts meet up and plan out how we are going to survive this time around. You used your Hokage voice, didn't you? Shikamaru asked, already knowing this plan as he helped Naruto develop it. Maybe. Naruto shifted his eyes to the right and Shikamaru snorted as he fed a different fawn. Tusan is coming this way, be ready for a talk. You think he has figured it out yet? Naruto whispered as Shikaku came into view. Maybe. Shikamaru muttered back as Shikaku fed some of the deer before sitting down across from the two genin. How are you two holding up? Shikaku asked, leaning back on his palms. Nervously. Naruto wiped his palms on his orange pants and Shikamaru nodded his head in agreement. I want to talk with you two about some things I've been noticing. Shikaku said slowly, gauging their expressions and body language. They didn't move from their spots on the grass and their faces took a look of impassiveness that betrayed nothing, very much like an ANBU. Like what, Tusan? Shikamaru asked, his voice flat but prepared. Just a few inaccuracies with your reasoning as to why you two are always up by 6 a.m. Shikaku said in a tone that sounded like he was talking about the weather. Oh? 
Naruto was honestly wondering where Shikaku was going. I don't think you two are going to meet your teams. I think you two are hiding something, and I want to know why you two feel the need to hide your secret from me. Shikaku said concerned. You are a genius, Shikaku-san. Naruto rubbed the back of his head. He is my two-san NAR. Shikamaru yawned, his signal for the newest half-truth to take place. I guess we have some explaining to do. During our time in the academy, we were labeled dead lasts. That's not the case. Naruto started and he saw Shikaku was looking at the two intensely. We pulled our performances in class. The way they taught did nothing for us. Shikamaru interjected. We found out that working together we could surpass everyone's expectations of us. The reason we have gotten up so early was so we could train together, we could encourage each other and work on our skills. Naruto said. Some would call us prodigies, I guess. Why didn't you just tell us, me? Shikaku asked, a look of betrayal flashing and Shikamaru felt guilt welling up in his stomach. We wanted to to San. At the same time, we needed this to be a secret. We needed people to underestimate us. Shikamaru said softly, In this world, it is good to have a few surprises up your sleeves. Shikaku agreed as he traced the scars on his face as he sat and thought, How long have you two been training together? Since the academy. Naruto said right away, the time they spent training together in the future and the time they spent in the academy almost lined up perfectly. That long, huh? Shikaku muttered. Sorry for not telling you sooner, Tusan. Shikamaru bowed his head. He felt all the emotions of his father dying during the war well back up, thinking that his father was disappointed in him. He blinked as a hand landed on his head, and he glanced up to see his dad looking down at him with a small smile and kind eyes. I understand, Shikachan. I'm proud of you, too, for taking your training into your own hands. If you need any help, don't hesitate to ask me. I would be glad to help you, too. Now on to more current events. Are you two ready for the Chunin exams? Shikaku smiled, and both Naruto and Shikamaru slumped in relief. We're totally ready for this. Naruto pumped his fist into the air. Ma, it'll be troublesome, but we've got this too, San. Shikamaru assured his father as he scratched his head. I'll be looking forward to seeing both of you two in the final rounds. Shikaku said with confidence. We'll make it there. Naruto promised.